The thermal model is kind of something we'll have as well. But this is something that needs to be developed. And the main uh, transition point is how to convert the architectural model in terms of zoning to this more refined thermal model. Typically, we, we assume a five meter offset for the exterior zones and then interior zones uh, in the middle of our building. So let's say we have this thermal model developed and we wanna see specifically for this building, for the geometry that we have, what are the HVAC system options we have and what are the space requirements for each of these systems? So this is where the tool, the HVAC or script comes in. And once you open the tool, uh, you'll notice that there's two stages to it or two really parts to it. One is first to initialize the energy simulation and ensure that this runs and we get the performance metrics that we want out of it. The second step is the design of the HVAC system. So first, I'll show you very quickly how to initialize this kind of um, combined model, and then we'll review some of the performance metrics that it outputs. The tool is very similar to a typical energy simulation workflows in that we define a weather file, in this case, Boston, the climate zone, climate zone five, and now we can go ahead and start associating the geometry that we have in our model to the grasshopper and HVAC -er workflow that we have. So it's really a task of going through the different elements, the thermal zones, these have to be closed volumes, our windows. And finally, the ground condition. Once we've associated this, this model is pretty much ready to run. You'll see that there's some results there. We won't talk about that until we re-simulate. This is from a previous run. You can also associate elements of external shading. If you have, the tool doesn't need this to run, but let's say you have a fairly developed facade and you wanna account for that in the energy simulation, you can do that at this stage here. And finally, we have a directory um, somewhere in our computer where the simulation is gonna run. Once this has all been associated pretty quickly, we can hit simulate and we are running a typical Energy Plus uh, annual simulation for this building, um, taking into account the geometry that we input for our thermal zones, our windows, the location, the templates uh, for this program, um, as well as any other external shading elements like context or facade that we want to incorporate. Once the simulation has finish running, you can navigate to the bottom of the screen here, to the bottom of the page, and you'll notice a bar chart has appeared. And this bar chart summarizes the energy consumption broken down by end use for four different HVAC systems we want designers to become familiar with. In the future, when we'll have additional HVAC system options, however, we thought this was a good starting point, these kind of four very different systems were considered. The first is the VAV, the standard, the baseline approach. We have a kind of enhanced VAV, so it's the baseline approach with economizer settings. And you'll notice there's some energy performance benefits associated with that. And finally, we're evaluating the fan coil unit system and the VRF system as well. So the bar chart summarizes the end use distribution for these four different systems we're considering. And then down below, you will see the energy use intensity, the operating carbon, the annual operating cost, first cost, and then floor area requirements for each one of these systems. This is valuable to us, not only because it provides a metric for some of these um, performance characteristics that we don't typically associate it with, such as annual operating cost and first cost, but it gives us an ability to quantitatively compare these systems. Now you could say, if we wanna optimize energy use efficiency, energy use intensity, we're gonna pick you know, the, the all electric system or the fan coil system. However, as you start to layer in additional metrics, such as first cost, um, considering carbon, refrigerant, things like this, this it, the solution doesn't come, is not as readily apparent, which we think is a beneficial thing. We wanna lay out and give designers all these metrics that they can consider to then help them narrow down and make the best, best design decision for their building. Once we have these metrics uh, evaluated, 
um, and calculate it for, for the different HVAC systems, we can go ahead now and actually work on the layout of the systems. And we move on to the second part of the script, the spatial design portion. And here, the kind of most exciting feature I want to demonstrate for you today is this ability to pick between your different HVC systems. What you see visualized here is your baseline VAV, the baseline system. If we switch to fan coil, you'll see that the system updates on the left-hand side in your Rhino model. And we see the duct work, the primary supply air duct, our risers within the space. You'll see the return and supply riser, as well as branches going to each one of your zones. Inside each of the zones, you also see a piece of terminal equipment. In this case, it's a fan coil unit. And this gives you a sense of the both the size of the duct work needed, as well as the different pieces of equipment you need to make the system work. If we switch to a VRF system, you'll see that certain things update. You're going to have more area requirements on your roof for the condensing units, hence why there's an increase in um, area requirements there. So once we have, you know, once you've picked your HVAC system, and now this decision can be made based on the performance metrics we just saw, or visually within the space that you're considering. Um, once you have chosen one of these systems, we have a series of geometric parameters that you can modify to make your HVAC system actually match up with your spatial layout. If we switch, for example, to the architectural model, a little bit of So we can see the duct work here visualized within the space in terms of how it interacts with the spaces that we have laid out inside our building. And you can see, you know, the duct work doesn't line up perfectly with the corridor. So we have options such as duct offset here, which can move the location of the primary duct. So right now, for example, let's say it lines up in the corridor. You can modify the height of the duct work to comply with your ceiling height. So this moves the duct work up and down. You can see corresponding to this, if you have a low ceiling or high ceiling ceiling stand, which you can make sure that the duct work fits inside the space. And you can also modify the location of this riser point so that it lines up correctly within, you know, a place that could house the riser, such as this room back here. So it looks like this is some sort of enclosed space down here that we could put the risers in. Um, there's many different geometric parameters that we've exposed to the users. And of the most generic ones are the offset and the height to get the duct correctly inside the space. However, the designer can modify the depth of branches going into the zone, what diffusers look like, all these kinds of different visualization options to get a realistic sense of what the HVAC system looks like within the space. Um, there are some visualization parameters at the bottom of the page for the different components of the system. But all in all, the goal is to say, look, with, with an energy model that we were planning to run for this building to help us evaluate its performance, with a little bit more work, we're able to get the geometry of the HVAC system and lay it out within our space so the designers can get an understanding of not only the metrics, the energy consumption, which you know is, is more typical, but also what these systems look within the space, which is the most valuable teaching um, component that comes out. 